So Power Rangers Cosmic Fury marks the end of the 30th season of Power Rangers and the entire series as we know it ahead of the upcoming reboot where everything will be completely brand new. But we'll pick up on that a little bit later. But I did think that the conclusion of Cosmic Fury was just so good, so epic. It felt like a bit of a five hour mini movie instead of a traditional season. And I just loved it. I thought it just paid respect to the brand so brilliantly. So many nice Easter eggs, so many brilliant tributes, so many throwbacks to its entire mythology. And they did keep the trend of using Sentai stock footage, but this time they only used Zord footage as outside of Zord footage, everything was completely brand new, filmed specifically for this season alone. And it was just so good, so intergalactic, so Star Wars inspired. And from the very first episode, you're immediately thrown into it. For example, Harvey losing his arm, Zeta being lost in space, no pun intended, the Morphin Masters being captured, Ollie now being evil and part of Zed's team, and speaking of Zed, he has a new army as well full of squid people. On that point, some of the designs are actually based on Sentai characters, but like I said, this is brand new footage of them. And speaking of the Zords, I actually loved the Zord designs. I just loved the orbs. It just felt like it was brand new. It connected to the way in which they do the morphing sequences. Obviously, this is all going to be linked because of the way in which the Zords look. But I just thought it came together so, so well. And of course, every single season of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, when, you know, the Zords get destroyed in the previous season, we do get to see big, epic sequences taking place for how they get their new powers and all of this sort of stuff. And I just feel like this time, they just elevated it so much further. And I really did love the fact that, you know, this is a third season of the Dino Fury brand. And on that point, they did keep a lot of things. For example, all of the secondary characters were all there and the helmets did look really, really similar. And that killer theme tune with the opening sequence, on that point, I just have to say, every single opening for Power Rangers was absolutely wicked, a true banger with the opening sequence. And it really does get you in the mood for what is going to come next. But I just feel like it just works so, so well, especially with Cosmic Fury. And what I also loved is that they did a true serialization in Cosmic Fury especially, and also in the second season of Dino Fury, where every single episode really did connect to the one that they did beforehand, instead of having really standalone episodes, which pretty much the entire bank of Power Ranger episodes have done. And especially the first season of Dino Fury definitely did follow this model as well. But I have to say, the second season of Dino Fury and Cosmic Fury were just so good because it was just an ongoing storyline and it really did feel elevated and it really did feel like more of a mature audience-based series which of course, when they do the reboot, they're going to be focusing on that. So I just cannot wait. And Billy Cranston really is the man of the moment right now is of course he is in this series as well. And he is also featured in the opening credit, which really does demonstrate that he is actually going to be a main player this time. And I just loved it. I mean, they did do all of the Mighty Morphin Power Ranger tributes in Mighty Morphin Once Upon a Ranger. So this time it is a lot more focused on the Dino Fury brand and more so on the latter seasons. Even though Cosmic Fury does tribute everything, I feel like it is dedicated more so towards concluding everything from a Dino Fury perspective. And you know, Mighty Morphin Once Upon a Ranger, you can see a conclusion and celebration to all of the Mighty Morphin seasons. Speaking of the later seasons, it was really cool to see Mick Canick back from Ninja Steel. I feel like he was a really cool character in those seasons. So it is really, really great to see him here too, even though he's not elevated to the same level as Billy. It is cool to see him making some appearances here. And even though, you know, in space, definitely did conclude the first five seasons of the brilliant Power Rangers series, I feel like Cosmic Fury doesn't necessarily try to do it again. It definitely does borrow a lot of things. For example, Zordon's tube, which we will talk about a little bit more. For example, calling one of the episodes Countdown to Destruction was a really great way to get inspiration and connect it back to In Space. But I think they're making it really clear that look, In Space was the conclusion of that particular arc and Cosmic Fury is a celebration of all 30 seasons, but I loved it, how they really did throw back to In Space. For example, you know, Zordon's tree being destroyed and made to be a sacrifice to cleanse all of the evil of the world is now being reversed this time. I thought that was absolute genius to this time do the opposite and the inverse of it and actually spread evil all around the world and destroy all goodness. I thought that twist was just absolute genius and I just thought it was such a wicked way to really throw back to in space. Speaking of the tube, I think it was really, really brilliant how the twist, you really did not see it coming that, you know, Basilica is gonna be the person that is going to actually betray Zed and is going to put him in this tube in the same way that she did with the Morphin Masters. But I just thought it was an absolute travesty 
to just waste the Master Z character. I mean, that development in the final couple of episodes, you are just on the edge of your seat to see what is going to happen when Z is able to get all of the powers of the Morphin Masters. And then when he does get it and becomes Master Z, that was absolutely unbelievable. And you are not thinking that the Rangers are going to get away with it this time. As you know, Zed is able to destroy all of their Zords. He's pretty much able to make them powerless and is just about to kill them. When you know, of course, the twist takes place. But I just think it was such a waste as Master Zed could have caused absolute destruction. And it could have just been so epic. I mean, I know that they did do the legendary battle where pretty much all of the Power Rangers are trying to save all of the teams in Super Mega Force. I just think it was a real shame. I mean, I get it, in Super Mega Force, they did bring back every single Power Ranger pretty much to help defend all of them against the Armada, but I just feel like they could have done something to make it really epic and really give Master Z the credit and power that he deserves, as he is the ultimate Power Rangers villain, and I just feel like it was just such a waste. That being said, I absolutely loved his reference to Dark Spectre, and he wishes that Dark Spectre could see him now, which I thought was really, really wicked. I did love when all of the classic Mega Zords were coming together with a bit of a CGI facelift. That was absolutely brilliant. And seeing evil rangers turning good was really, really good. And I just cannot believe the fact that they kept Ollie evil for so long. And I love the little twist that they had in terms of the final episode when he is finally officially back on the good side. He actually smiles in his opening sequence instead of just having a bit of a sad face. I thought that was so clever. And because of the fact that they filmed Cosmic Fury at the same time as they did Mighty Morphin Once Upon a Ranger, they were easily able to get Billy to come from one set onto another and were also easily able to get Rita Repulsa reappearing in the final few moments. It was really, really hilarious that Lord Zed's vision of a living nightmare is spending more time with his wife Rita Repulsa, which that was absolutely hilarious. It is a bit of a shame that certain characters did not get mentioned at all. For example, Kimberly, Jason, and Tommy. But they could have and should have just done something with them. And also, no Machine Empire. I absolutely love Power Rangers Zeo. I thought that was easily one of the best seasons. I mean, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers is of course at the top. I loved Zeo and I loved the Machine Empire and I just loved all of the characters over there. Prince Gasket, Princess Archerina, Scorpina, these villains never had a proper conclusion. So it would have been wicked if they had brought them into the mix here. I mean, maybe they'll do something with them in the reboot, but it would have been so good if they had mentioned them. I mean, Mucus and Slither, we have to give a bit of a shout out to them as they were the unsung heroes. And without them, they would have not been able to bring back Ollie onto the good side. They wouldn't have realized because of this what Master Zed's true plan is. Although it was so, so brilliant how Mucus and Slither really were on the evil side and then turned good. And on that point, loved Void Knight, although he was such a cool villain. And if anything, I would have loved to have seen him a little bit more. But, you know, he was really, really cool in Dino Fury. And I loved it that he transformed onto the good side and was a real advisor to all of the Power Rangers and was able to be like, look, this is how an evil person really thinks. Speaking of the Dino Fury Rangers, let's go through them one by one. So I absolutely loved Zato in this season. I actually couldn't stand him in the first two seasons as I felt like he was really cringy. I felt like his acting wasn't on par with the rest. Whereas this time, they elevated this character perfectly. And I just really feel like they learned so much from how Zato just wasn't clicking in Dino Fury to really make him work this time. I mean, it's so emotionally driven when he is just, you know, lost in space, he is getting replaced left, right and center. And then you're finding out that actually he doesn't have that long to live. And just seeing the relationship between him and Aeon was just really pulling on the heartstrings. And they really did elevate this character in a true way as he is of course ultimately going to become a Morphin Master and just being able to use the Morphin Master's star, being able to wield magic, having the cape. They not only made him so much cooler, but I feel like he just had so much more presence when he is on screen. And then when he is playing Zordon, I feel like all of those sequences are absolutely brilliant. Loved the fact that, you know, you haven't really heard about Zordon at all since In Space. And then they really did close that chapter in such a nice way. So I have to say, Zeta was so good this season. Amelia absolutely loved her, I think. Having a female Red Ranger was really, really good. They did so many firsts this time. For example, having an Orange Ranger, having a Red Ranger that is a female. All of those kind of stuff, I think, was so, so wicked here. And I just think Amelia, like I said, was such a brilliant leader. And even from the first episode of Cosmic Fury, when they still have the Cosmic Fury powers on, I feel like she was already stepping into the leadership role so well. Harvey was also really, really cool. Of course, this is so heartbreaking too, the fact that he loses his arm when he tries to use the staff to get the new powers. I thought that was absolutely heartbreaking. But they do show that he is able to continue all of his love for music. Zordon's epic line of May the Power Protect You being the final ever song, I thought was an absolute stroke of genius. 
And I just loved all of the musical moments that they have with Harvey as of course in real life. Chance Perez is of course a brilliant massive singer in the band in real life and came from a boy band so I feel like they made fun of all of that consistently throughout Dino Fury and I just have to say Harvey was such a wicked character in this season as well. Izzy didn't really have that much of a storyline in Cosmic Fury apart from the fact of course all is being overprotective with Fan and them two together being rangers when Fan becomes the orange ranger that moment is really really cool. She is the only one that is really able to save Solon even though Izzy didn't have that much of a great individual storyline together I feel like they were really really cool. Ollie elevating him to be an evil character with Lord Zed absolutely brilliant love evil rangers and I just think Ollie was just the perfect one to do it, as of course he's got a relationship with Amelia. But he's always been a little bit arrogant, thinking he's smarter than everybody else. I feel like it was the right decision to do it with him. And then in the final few moments to turn him on the good side was really, really good. And I feel like, you know, they really did make it feel a lot more adult in terms of how dark and sinister everything is. And really did set the audience up, Power Rangers, to be even more elevated and even more horror-based potentially in the future. Potentially, but definitely catering towards more of an adult audience. And then of course, Ion, like I said, loved his bromance with Zeta this time. I feel like them two as characters were elevated so much more, especially because it was just so heart-driven. And he was of course having his own cafe. Loved the fact that they were showing that humans are actually able to live together. With Rafconians, with other aliens too, I feel like it was a really nice message that I feel like a lot of people can learn from. And of course, in the final few moments that you see, Ion, he's got Zack's hairstyle that of course Zack has in Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. I feel like that was a really nice throwback. As of course, from the moment you see Zion, you are instantly thinking that he looks exactly like Walter Jones. I feel like, you know, in conclusion, they just did such a good job with Power Rangers Cosmic Fury. And I feel like, you know, they didn't destroy the concept of Power Rangers within this universe. So potentially in the future, we could have one-off appearances that we do revisit this particular universe. But that being said, I just cannot wait to see what on earth they're going to be doing in the future with the upcoming reboot. 2025 cannot come soon enough as I'm just so excited to see what's going to happen when they reimagine everything as it just has the potential to be absolutely brilliant. But like I said, Cosmic Fury was the perfect conclusion to these 30 years of epic Power Rangers content. I mean, of course, as fans, we will always want more and more and more, but I feel like they did conclude it in a really brilliant way. And so for all of those reasons, I'm going to give it a solid eight out of 10. Now I'd love to hear what you think. What did you think of Power Rangers Cosmic Fury? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below, and I look forward to seeing you in my next video.